Hello everyone and welcome back to Avakin, where in the last episode we finished the building of our first building, the town hall. Now, since we began this building project, quite a lot of time has passed and a lot of our halflings, uh, well rather, a lot of new halflings have arrived. Uh, the word has spread of the prosperous nature of Avakin and many, many halflings have decided to call this their home. Now, that does mean that the very first part of this episode is going to be decorating the town hall, but also doing some necessary moving things around, because plans have changed a little bit. So let's start with that, shall we? Uh, first and foremost, I'm going to slice down the building so that we can see what's going on inside. I want to, chiefly, uh, get our hearthlings indoors. All of our hearthlings. So that's going to require checking who is where. Right, Soul Wind, you're currently uh, working here. Now... Let's have a quick look. In terms of our uh, types of uh, halflings, we've got Soul Wind Bubbles. Uh, okay, we've got um, Darius and Little Rabbit. Got Tomcat and Lady Wolfheart as our crafters. Oh, and also Obsidian, uh, sorry, Obsidian Mist and Plumber Smack. We have two general crafters and three warriors. Hmm. All right. All right, I think we can we can do something with this. I am going to have well bubbles and soul wind. I think it makes a lot of sense for you two to be together now. Oh, fantastic! Well, actually, it's one of the larger rooms. In fact, uh, might be better for someone else. Okay. Well, first and foremost, what we're going to do is we're going to move around people's beds. This is plumber smack. Okay, plumber smack. Uh, perhaps plumber smack. Uh, in fact, yeah, we're going to have you in one of the nicer rooms, since it is a pretty pretty important role that you have. Who's over here? This is Big Al. Fantastic. Big Al, I want you in here. Is this, again, one of the larger rooms, and it's going to be for our warriors. We've got Lady Wolfheart. Uh, okay. I have a, a, have a tailor join you there. Uh, little Rabbit down here. All right. And over here we've got Manu. Manu, let's get you moved in here. I'm going to try and keep people reasonably close get together based on their their role. Now, this is going to be a temporary thing. We're not going to have all of our hearthlings uh, settled in these locations uh, permanently. This is very, very much a temporary situation. Uh, hopefully, it will allow us to get everything sorted out. Oh, wow. We've got uh, a lot of people over there. I need some more thatch. I don't believe as yet that we have everything we want. Where would the... Uh, we've got four spools of thread. Uh, we need more. A lot more. Uh, two more, I think. Maybe four more. I can't remember exactly. Uh, we'll have to have a look at that. Right, so we've got a couple of the beds moved around. We have got... Who's it living over here? This was Little Rabbit. And we have in here Lady Wolfheart. And over, over here, Soul Wind. Marvellous. So, Bubbles in there. Soul Wind, you are moving. We're going to have you in there with Bubbles. We'll, we'll roughly keep people in locations based on the, the, the type of job that they do. Um... Well, in a way, I would actually like our cook, our farmer, and our trapper to all be in the same room. Can I tell that to move? Oh, I can. Marvellous. Uh, right, Lady Wolfheart, let's get you in here as well. It'll be a little bit like the barracks. Oh, actually, no. These rooms are not quite as large as the barrack rooms. Uh, okay, well, let's, uh, let's cancel that idea, and we'll move them over here instead. That will work fine I think there we go we'll get uh, you two moved in there you're moving down there right that means that it remains to see who is currently set up over here Aquatami Aquatami will get you in this nice big old room right there that shouldn't be too bad next up we've got Jin Jin let's get you into the warriors barrack there we are uh, next we've got Tomcat now Tomcat who are we going to have you with? Uh, Promise Magma, you need uh, someone else in there. We've got... Uh, actually, I'm going to allow, I'm gonna allow the, you to move the beds first because it's going to get increasingly hard for me to um, work out who is where. 
Now the farms are not where they're going to stay. Uh, eventually, I'm probably just going to dig that all, whole area down and hopefully work it into the aesthetic of the village. I would like the farms a little bit further away in a dedicated little area, perhaps with bridges over the irrigation canals. It'll look delightful. I'm telling you, delightful. Right, the warriors are all in the same place. Uh, okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, is anyone currently in this spot? No, that is reserved for travellers, so that means we can pull her up. Obsidian Mist, there we go. Let's get you moved down here, and you get a pretty large room there, because I, uh, the healers, it's a very, very important job, that one, I feel. Uh, Tongo, we'll come back to you. We'll move this one. Basically, I'm looking at the top, and if there's a name there, then that's letting us know that that is, in fact, a room for one of the uh, already assigned uh, hearthlings. Uh, and if there is nothing there, then it means that we can safely tuck it away and bring it out later. There we go. Uh, reserved for traveler. Let's get rid of you then. And finally, Darius. There we go, Darius. Let's get you shifted down here then. In you go, Darius. There we are. Uh, actually, no. I, no, 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 no. That would be a bad place. I would make my brain rot a little bit. Or a lot, as the case may be. Right, let's pop that in there. There you go. Right. So with all of that done... Oh, really? We just got one odd person out? How many halflings? Oh, we've got 13 halflings. So yeah, okay, that makes sense. But well, Tomcat, uh, let's get you in there, I suppose. So let's just do a quick tally. 6, uh, 8, 10, 12, 13. There we are. Everyone will be in doors and that was the first thing that i wanted to uh work on oh no can i just ignore it can i just pretend i didn't see it that would be good is there a way for us to get enough ah oh, there's a thread over there um let's quickly do this let's hope they don't notice i think that's the best thing to do um is it possible that we could get everything we need yeah let's let's try People, we need you out there right now grabbing these fibers because this is going to get nasty if you don't do it swiftly. I, I am going to try and uh, hold off on reading that note and hopefully it's going to make a difference for us. But uh, there's no guarantee on this one, uh, I'm afraid. Let's just see if anyone can uh, quickly get some fibers because we desperately, desperately need those last little bits. Uh, let's have a look. How many are left? We're trying to maintain 10. There we go. They will be coming out here to grab the coarse fiber bundles. Excellent. Now, there was something else that, uh, that uh, more of a game setting um, suggestion, and that was to, where is it? Prefer higher quality crafting ingredients. I have disabled that because one of the big things that made the, the, the uh, building process of the town hall take so long is that our potter was wandering over here to gather clay when we had massive amounts of clay right next to it. It's because they were trying to get the best quality clay they could find. Now, that did mean that we, we generally got some, some better items out of it, sure. But we really, really wanted to get the items uh, faster rather than better quality in that particular instance. I will be able to override it here and there. For example, uh, with the uh, with our tailor here, I could tell them to make something and then tell them to use the best quality materials for it wherever possible. And that should be fine. Uh, let's have a quick look. Have we got everything we need? How many... Have we got... We've, really? We've only got five? Why have we only got five? Oh, no. I believe that we're automatically trying to turn them into leather. Uh, oh, no, we're not, actually. That's a lie. And why have we only got a few? Oh. Are we... Um... Right, okay. That's a bit of a pain. I can hear combat going on. Oh, my lord. Oh, my goodness. There is a... Drizzir... Golgok, chasing direwolves. That would be terrifying for us to have to fight. Let's hope that we can get, gather all the uh, materials before the goblins decide that they, they want to go to war with us, because that would end really, really fantastically badly. Uh, all right, let's have a quick gander. How many have we got? We've got no fiber, but wow. Are we, are we making... This, I think we may have just already started making it. Unless they haven't been stored. That's a possibility, I suppose. 
Uh, have we got many? De undeployed seven. All right. Uh, if I click on this, does it still show undeployed seven? Yes, undeployed seven. I can't remember how much it, we needed to get. I think it may have been eight. Given that, then, we're going to need a few more bundles. Ideally, if you could come out and just grab these for me, that would be fantastic. Um, I'd rather if Solwind didn't make the archery target right now. I could, I suppose, pause that. Uh, but I'm just going to leave it for the time being. Now, one thing we can also have a look at for masonry, as we're building the archery target, because it's generally cheaper, um, that's significantly cheaper too, though it will require that we make some stone. So I'm actually going to craft one of those as well, and we are going to remove these two. Let's not have them for now, or perhaps I can just uh, turn it off. Yeah, there we go. Now that will probably not have removed the build orders in here, so we'll just drop those down. There we go. Hopefully, we will soon see the coarse fibers used to make the final components. We've still only got seven. Why is this not being done? I feel that it should be done rather sharpish. Let's drop that down there. Uh, well, actually, let's drop all of them and then... Just so that I make sure that they're not using the highest quality ingredients. There we are. Now, hopefully, our weaver will rush off and do that straight away. Where is our weaver? Crafting spool of red. There we go. As soon as that is done, I will be happy to talk with the goblin. There we go. I think that might be all we needed. There we are. Okay. Let's open it up. Five of eight. What? What? What do you mean, five of eight? Why is there only five of eight now? Who is using my thread? For what are they using it? This I do not understand. Um, that isn't there. That hasn't been made. Oh, wait. Oh, no, I'm making bandages. No, wait, I'm not. I'm using bundles of fiber. Okay. So... I'm not quite sure about this one. Undeployed eight. So, where exactly are they? Hmm. That is most curious. I'm not sure how long the goblin's gonna let us just keep him waiting, but uh, I'm willing to try and find all of the fiber we can and bring that down. Sure, okay. I will also temporarily turn off. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a way that I can just tell them to, to stop working on it, but I guess I could just drop that down and just leave them working on, on 10 of them. Uh, this way, we shouldn't bring any of that down. Um, and We shouldn't try to, to manufacture any more of them. Uh, where does all of this coarse fiber bundle coming from? I have no idea. Uh, but I don't mind that it keeps appearing. Okay, well, let's hope that uh, our halflings get the work done. We need three more spools of thread. That's all we need, and we should be good to pay off Chieftain Crew Arm Guard. Granted, we could just go to war, but I'd rather not if I could avoid it, if I'm perfectly honest. Uh, so right now, the focus is going to be on that, and we're about to get a load of cotton as well, which will be quite nice. Uh, let's have a look there. The flowers are already fading. Uh, we've got uh, plenty of uh, golden gourds as well. Okay, so we may end up with that. Uh, we've just got... Tomcat has uh, achieved weaver level 2. Uh, mechanical weaving. The weaver has acquired enough knowledge and abilities to create a loom and create accessories, combat equipment and outfits that provide bonuses or enh uh, enhancements. Marvellous. Uh, we will wait on that. Well, actually, no, we should keep that open just so I can see it. Uh, hopefully, we now have the loom to place. We do have cactus seed flowers. Learn to grow delicious prickly flowers. Let's place that down and use it. Uh, we also have a stone training dummy. Marvellous. Oh, there we are. Let's use this and use. There we go. We now know how to manufacture these. 
how much is going to be required to make the... It says we have a 10 under point, but I, I don't... Oh no, was that how much we had when the message came through? Ah, the game may be thinking a few steps ahead of me. Well, poop. Alright, well, I guess we're just gonna have to go through it. Change our, our mind. The goblin frowned so hard you can't see his eyes. What? You don't have my stuff? Blood, the stability and the vengeance? I actually find that far too endearing to be intimidated by it. My lord. I love the way the goblins talk. I feel so guilty about killing them. <laughs> They're far too cute. Uh, Alright, well, uh, they're going to be doing their thing. Uh, now, do we have any thatch? If we have thatch, I would very much like to start upgrading some of these beds. We've got four thatch. Alright. Uh, well, let's start with the beds of our, uh, of our warriors. Let's get all of those upgraded. And following that, our foodsmiths. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll set them all to be upgraded and hopefully we'll get them all made as and when thatch becomes available to us. Uh, okay, well, I'm not sure what's going to happen now. I really, really was hoping to avoid any uh, immediate conflict, but uh, it looks like that's not going to be on the cards for us. At least not for the time being. However, if we have a look in here, we may find that we can change the items being grown. Can we now make uh, cactus rods? Yes, yes, we can. Uh, we're not going to, but it does mean... Ooh, let's... Uh, what was that? A goblin raiding, par raiding party is approaching. Oh my. Okay, well, this is what's going to happen. Attracted to shiny things. Batar the Awesome. And Modern Scale Lad. Okay. Well, the very first thing, we're going to summon everyone back to the town. Let's, let's get everyone on the move. I'm also going to have to have Plumber Smack switching roles to uh, combat. So change jobs, please, Plumber Smack. I need you back as being a cleric for the time being. Now, I'm not sure if that's going to take precedence over the alert. So if not, then I may have to cancel the alert. But first, let's pull back as many people as we can. Go, go, go. Just drop what you're doing and run. Just run. All the way back, please. Now, our combatants should be out about... No, Plumber Smack is going to prioritize becoming a cleric. Well done, Plumber Smack. That is awesome. No, just run past them. Ah, oh, they're going to get a bit of a clobber, but that is what it is. All right, let's get our... Uh, no, 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 everyone get back there. I keep thinking that's the uh, defend ground command. All right, let's get... Actually, no, let's pop the uh, defend command for all of our military just out here. There we go. You should really stop training. I mean, I admire it in a way, but uh, I'd, I'd also kind of like you to get involved in, in the fight. There we go. We should be able to take fa make fairly quick work of this. There we go. Big alley from the uh, from the back row. Uh, we'll check out the daily update in just a moment. Let's see what we can do. You're doing quite a lot of damage there. I'm not liking that. How about we focus fire? Uh, we are focusing fire, to be fair. Uh, so that should be fine. But try it if you can. Just just chase them down. Let's remove them from the equation completely. What did they drop? They dropped. A fox belt. Probably draped over their sh shoulders. Uh, but it looks like we may be safe enough to release our townsfolk from alert. So you guys go ahead and come back out. There we go. We should have this uh, raider taken care of in just a moment. Now that does bring us on to the, to the question of defenses. Now that is something I am going to take care of. But at the moment, uh, the well... The entire first ep uh, sorry, uh, third episode was spent building this up. Now, my plan is to have some sort of um, wall around here, some sort of wall across here. However, I am not going to simply wall off the entire colony. I don't like that kind of playstyle. I don't like it in No Moria for the same reasons I don't like it here. It feels a little bit too cheesy. There should always be a way in or a way out, and that... Uh, means doors. I'm fine with having the doors there and that the doors need to be broken down, but just building a wall can just remove you from danger entirely. And by the same token, um, whilst I don't like that playstyle for myself, uh, for those who do, if you wanted to, you could just set up on a plateau. Uh, for example here, if you set up there and there was no obvious way for anyone to climb down, then you're basically immune to attack. 
and you could live happily up there forever without ever needing to worry about uh, being under threat. Uh, so that is definitely a play style that you can go for. Uh, let's check out the daily update. Oh, we've we've actually crested the amount. Wow, I am actually quite surprised. Right, Aaron Zab. Let's find Aaron Zab. Where are you, Aaron Zab? Uh, let's uh, drop down to speed one. Aaron Zab. Oh. It was only a matter of time. Only a matter of time. Now, that is a tricky place for you to be, Aranzab, but we should be able to do something for you. Now, what we've done over here is we have actually created an access point. And that is not exactly ideal. Uh, what we would rather do, actually, is try to remove that access point. Uh, perhaps that is something we should uh, focus on doing sooner rather than later but in the meanwhile we should be able to pop down a little ladder there and a little ladder here just to let our peeps across let's get that set up now hopefully Aaron's out that will allow you to get across if i tell the town to go into alert mode this should then take it off are you gonna no hmm. well hopefully we can get this built quickly and then you can get across uh, scorpions, are they, are they hostile? No, creepy little creatures, how rude, my lord. Uh, but this will open up a bit of a, uh, a security risk for us. To that uh, effect, so is our trench for as long as it is only one, uh, one tall. So if we just cut a, a trench around this perimeter, we will make it so that no one can easily get into our... Our camp. The unfortunate thing, well, actually, yeah, the unfortunate thing there is if we do that, we're not going to be able to cross either without building a bridge of some sort, which uh, we could totally do if we really wanted to. But I think I, I would rather keep that for the the eventual um, district that we'd be building. Where, what, what are you, what are you going? I don't quite understand. Oh, is this somewhere over here that you can climb down into the waterways? Wait. Ah, that is probably where you're going there. Okay, well, we could take away the ladder then. But honestly, I'm happier leaving the ladder there. This way you could, uh, if you start walking back now, I'm going to cry. Um, no. Is that where you're going? Yes, it was. Okay, well, you know what? Um, sure, you've got a long long way to go to get back over but yeah that possibly brings up another another thing that we are going to need to look into um for the time being um we can have plumber smack return to being a a regular herbalist uh, and i think that would probably be wise to do so let's uh, get plumber smack back to being a herbalist change your job for now plumber smack please uh, and then you can focus on that for now uh but let's have a look at our new friend, shall we? Uh, one mind, that's not great. Four body and five spirit, that isn't bad though. Perhaps, perhaps we could get you look, focusing on doing a bit of combat. Maybe to replace one of the footmen here. That might not be a, a bad move. Uh, you're also a professor and a uh, featherweight as well. All right, Aaron, let's uh, find out your name, shall we? And the next on the name list to be selected will be uh, Silkas. Have I, yeah, there we go. Silkas, welcome to Avakin, Silkas. Yeah, I think I think a, a military, uh, the military is going to be your particular calling there. But we do have a couple of questions here. Now, the big issue that we're having is uh, access. Now, I've made access here, but I would rather it be something more visually appealing, frankly. Uh, and that is definitely something that we can look into. We've also got the, the question of defense that we're going to need to uh, deal with. And you know, there is uh, a lot to be said about that. Now, I'm not sure if the uh, flowers here, ready for harvest, will this generate thatch at all? Because if it does, that is going to be truly amazing. Let's have a quick watch. Uh, and in fact, we'll speed up time a little bit and see if you generate just fibers or if you generate any thatch as well. Uh, can we see what you're holding? Uh, it looks like it is just fiber. Okay, we may need to get some uh, some plants together that will allow us to produce 
thatch. But at the very least, we've got cotton bundles. Soft to the touch, spinnable into thread. Uh, yeah, we're... That being said, maybe we will be able to just move up to fancier beds and that won't require any kind of thatch. Uh, the trader will be back in 22 hours. Uh, Aaron Zab has already joined us. That's fine. And Aaron Zab is already over here. W wonderful. Uh, next up, we've got a trader approaches your town. Hello, Avakeen. I'm just passing through, but I'd be willing to make a trade or two. Five clay oil lamps for three fox lilies. Uh, no, that doesn't sound like a good trade. So, uh, thank you. And invaders approaching. Oh, no, they've got wolves this time. Kobold wolves. All right. Uh, it looks like they're just going to constantly send more and more fighters down our way, and that is going to constantly be a problem for us. And I only just had Plumber Smack uh, change jobs. That's a little bit of an annoyance. Uh, but all right. Let's get Plum Smack back to being a defender. Change jobs, please. But on this point, Jin and Manu will probably level up to the point that we can get them uh, using uh, a bow reasonably fast. In fact, actually, Jin is already at that point. So we're going to need a carpenter to get a bow, but that will be worth it, I think. Okay, Plum Smack, let's get you uh, being a cleric then, please. And thank you. Could we possibly also get another cleric book made? I feel that that might be a wise move. Uh, we're going to need some leather, but we can probably get someone to make that for us. Uh, I don't believe this requires uh, any particular quality, so we're not going to worry about that. Let's make uh, one bolt of leather. Oh, there we are. It's already been queued up, so that's fine. Uh, that's wonderful, in fact. We'll slide that up just so that in a pinch, we're going to be able to get a couple of people set up there but we're going to go ahead and ring the town bell once again and we're going to have our defenders well defend uh we'll have them take a position there hopefully all right then everyone time for you to rush back if you can oh they've got archers that is a bit worrisome uh in that case we're going to need to be very careful with our micromanaging here uh let's see Right, defenders, let's get you over there. And we'll take this one a little bit more carefully. We want to try and catch them from around the corner where they're not going to have as easy of a time attacking us. There we go. Now, where are those wolves? Uh, I'm not sure what those wolves are doing, but they're not here, which is the main thing. Okay, so we've got uh, Gabriot Coin Purse and Balnock Silvertoe. Devotee of the Diamond Star. Okay. Engaged in combat and chasing Manu. No, no, no. This will not be happening. Not today, Sunny Jim. All right. Let's start uh, doing some damage. Oh, that was uh, quite the, the potent attack there. Try to keep focus on one at a time, please. Where are... Plumber Smack, what are you doing? Get over there, Plumber Smack. My goodness. Dereliction of duty will not be be supported here in Avakin. If that happens again, you're going to be exiled. You're going to be sent with the good book out into the wastes. Maybe if you survive a whole year, you will be allowed back. Maybe. My goodness. Uh, there we are. I, I, I mean, it would be so much better if I could say sent beyond the wall, but we haven't got a wall yet. So this is going to have to be out, out in the great wastes. And you're just going to have to... Really? Maybe I wasn't clear before. Or maybe, when I mentioned that there was no Great Wall, you took that as a sign of weakness. Damn it, Plumber Smack. Why are you such a scallywag? Oh. Plumber Smack. No, you've definitely got a, a role to play. I feel that Plumber Smack is going to get everyone dead. Um, I'm going to turn off the bell and hope that that was perhaps some sort of glitch. It may well have been a glitch, to be fair. It could have been a result of Plumber Smack having been initially told to, uh, or believing that it needed to get into um, to the town town hall. Uh, well, we'll just do our best. But this is... Yep, you're down. Well, thanks, Plumber Smack. You scoundrel. That fight would have been so much better had you not just let your teammates down so so crazily. Alright, let's uh, just have this fight and then fail. Um, 
No, 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 no. I appreciate that you are not abandoning your duty, but I feel that that, that may actually lead to your death. And Plumbers Mac is actually heading over now, at least. Let's uh, draw this fight down here. Plumbers Mac, I really, really super need you to take care of uh, people's health, if you'd be so kind. There we go. Finally. Oh, my lord. Did someone please go and uh, pick up Jin and... Uh, yeah. Jin is really hurt. Wow. We're going to have to use healing potions now, Plumbers Mac. You realize this is your fault? My goodness. Okay, let's, uh, let's get you back. In reality, it wasn't really Plumbers Mac's fault. Let, let's be honest. There's definitely a little bit of a glitchiness in the game there. There was no particular reason that I could see that Plumbers Mac wouldn't have been engaging in combat. Uh, as soon as you're done with that wolf, I would really like it if you neutralize the thief. Thief next, please. There we go. Big Al should be able to easily take care of that as well. Um, okay, the thief is actually being reasonably brave. Uh, both of them, in fact. There we go. Come on, Big Al. There we are. And then the next one, please. As soon as you've got the chance, don't let them make off with any of our hard-won resources and loot. We've got some bones, got some pelt. We've got a l Wow, really? Well, well, well. That was quite amazing, actually. Let's let's take stock of some of these messages. I'm fairly certain there was there were quite a lot more that went through. Um alright. Yeah, Jin has made it all the way to level five. Uh, let's have a look at all of our, our fighters. Manu is a max level footman now. Jin is a you know decent weight to the to the next level. Big Al, a decent way to the next uh, to the max level for an archer and Plumber Smack. Did you actually get any skill there? You did actually. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's have a have a look. I I don't. I'm not. I'm not sad that they got skill. I just kind of feel that they didn't deserve it as much as everyone else, considering what was going on. Uh, right. Okay. So healer training. Um. Sorry. Healing aura. There we are. Minus strength. Compassion up. And heal aura rank two. Healing aura power and radius increased. Uh, oh, sorry, you're on your way to level 5, rather. Major strength, the clank's presence, greatly improves the muscle of those around them. Okay, Big Al, let's have a look at your abilities. So you have unlocked range increase, uh, increased draw strength, draw speed, the archer shoots arrows with greater speed. Uh, level 5, uh, the archer can attack enemies from very far away. And at level 6, you will get double shot. The archer learns the ancient art of quick shots, allowing rapid fire of two arrows in rapid succession. All right, Jin, let's have a look at you. You've got Power Spike, damage up 40%, and Cleave, a slashing strike that deals a damage to up to four enemies around the footman's target. Manu, however, has gone all the way to damage up 60%. Well done, Manu. Seriously well done. That is amazing. Okay, well, uh, as soon as we get another bow, one of you will be joining Big Al in archery. And at that point, we'll probably look for, we'll probably move Silchat up into the footman role. Okay, well done. Uh, unfortunately, Plumber Smack, I'm going to need you to be a healer for a while now. You're, you're not going to get to go back to being a uh, regular herbalist for a bit. I need you to focus on healing. There you go, you've been placed down in bed. There we are. You're recovering slowly. You got placed on the uh, bed that didn't have any thatch on it, of course, but uh, oh well. Uh, now, I'm wondering if our healer is going to actually be able to uh, treat those who've been downed. We are using bandages, though, which is great. There we go. Let's see how much of an effect that makes. If any. Oh, no, it did make a good bit of a, uh, of a difference. Now, uh, I was told that I could just place down um, healing pots, and that's how they used it is not, unfortunately, the case. Uh, you don't place healing pots in that way. Quite a lot of other types of potions are used that way, but not healing pots, uh, unfortunately. Now then, I'm I'm tempted. We've got to decide on how we want to move our, our buildings around. Um, specifically, the cooks and tables and the like. Let's uh, head up to the top floor and strip away the roof. All right, if we were to move some tables, we're going to need a lot more of them, but uh, that's definitely something we can look at. Uh, cauldron. 
Let's have a couple of these against the walls, perhaps. We, or even centrally, I suppose. But I would kind of like central to be more stockpile than anything else. So we'll have the uh, cook stove. We'll pop you there. Uh, we're then going to move up the mill. We can have that there as well. And finally, the oven. We can have that here too. Then I'm going to want to start moving around some of the ingredients bins. So we've got the... A uh, raw vegetable bin, that's definitely worth moving up. We could have that perhaps um, to the side. Yeah, we'll have both of them to the side just down here. And then we'll have the uh, raw, uh, the cooking ingredients of the meats bin uh, over here as well. Let's get that in place. There we are. Very, very nice indeed. Now, I would like to get some actual um, shelving for some of, the, some of the goods, but also chests and containers. For now, let's just get those ones up there. Uh, next up, I would not mind at all if we could move... Well, we've got the mason and the the kiln, the, uh, the potter there. Let's see about getting that set up, perhaps, in here. Can we move the potter's kiln in here? I mean, it's a, such a vast building. Um, we could have it tucked into the side there. Sure, okay. Uh, along with the potter's wheel, we could have this perhaps uh, just situated about here. Um, let's have it just tucked in there. And then we're going to want the the bin for all of the clay. We're going to have that one tucked right next to the potter's wheel as well. We will want a bin for fuel, more than likely. Uh, but we can, we can have a look at setting that up. Once these have been moved in. The main thing right now is getting getting most of the stuff indoors. That being said, I could move the beds elsewhere. But I, I think what I will probably do is over time I will move the beds into other buildings. I mean, that's, that's a given. But I mean, I will move um, all of the beds out. I was playing with the idea of having some of this for some um, uh, travelers. And perhaps we will keep these ones. For example, although I may move around the beds a little bit just to have a couple of, of people coming in and it'll feel uh, appropriate I think to have like a little bazaar down there uh, I think that would actually be really really nice uh, we will have the tailor up top so let's turn off slice again uh, there we go and open up the rooms let's uh, move the tailor up to the top over here uh, we could perhaps have the tailor's bench just uh, over here underneath that uh, that window and the weaver's workbench, uh, sorry, the, uh, the, the, uh, what is this? Is this a spinning wheel? There we go. I was going to say loom, but I knew it, knew it wasn't. Uh, we'll have the mason over here as well. Let's get the, the mason's pedestal there and the mason's workbench moved as well. Uh, well, we could have both of those together without too much issue, but the mason actually has a supply bin for stone, so we can move that along as well. We'll have that on the other side there. I think that would be fine. Um, that being said, I do, I am going to try and keep things a little bit closer together than I would normally want. Doesn't look as nice, but it will allow us to fit the majority of our crafts inside. And I think that's probably a bit of a bit of a higher priority right this moment. Right, the last one is the herbalist bench. So let's get that one moved up here. And uh, the herbalist bench, honestly, can just go ahead and sit over here, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, that seems to, to look quite nice. There we are. Let's get everyone on the go. Let's get all of these things inside. And finally, we're going to finish this building to some degree. We haven't decorated it at all. I'm going to get the essentials inside first, and then we'll start worrying about decorations. Uh, for the time being, I just want to, to get everything um, put inside where it's out of the, the way of, of direct attack or, or any particular threat. Uh, I'm going to lay, let my my um, warriors party just kind of wander around. We are going to need to get a blacksmith relatively soon, which is going to necessitate getting some iron. Uh, we've got some gold over there. We've got iron at the top. We've got coal. Uh, more gold. The only, uh, well, actually, no, we've got iron there as well. So we're probably going to have to dig in on this side to get that early iron to make a blacksmith's forge. Uh, we've also got a lot of loot that our hearthlings are going to go and collect from over there. Okay. 
Well, I don't like the idea of uh, leaving an episode without having done some new new building. So uh, we're actually going to check on... Oh, have we got some new? No. Huh. I'm a little bit relieved. <laughs> I will be honest. Tiny bit relieved. Uh, let's start the, the process of uh, moving over the tables and, and benches and the like. I think that would actually be quite nice. Uh, but we are going to focus on one new building before we wrap up this episode. So there we go. We'll, we'll have to set up a lot of new um, benches and tables to be made. We can actually set that up now, in fact. Uh, let's go ahead and get these on the go. We can make uh, bone clay. Which means we could make some very, very swanky items. We can also now just make um, mosaic wall tiles and, and coverings, and that would be very nice. Um, clay comfy bed requires a bolt of cloth. Oh, and feathers. Right. That will be the, the difficult one there. We're going to need a, a shepherd and some poyos to get those going. But uh, let's craft... Let's go for, say, seven... Uh, tables actually, but we're going to say use the highest quality ingredients you've got for those and then Let's go with 14 new chairs and Likewise work on those as you can but as I mentioned I'd like a, a new a new building right now We've got a very hodgepodge way of getting across here and that is that is gonna make this place as as accessible as anything else So let's try and make something a little bit nicer, shall we? I'm thinking a bridge. A bridge over here, and that would allow us to get out there and do a little bit of fighting as well. And I know it's going to increase the uh, the access points, and it will make this place a little bit less defensible. But uh, right now, there's not much in the way of defense anyway. So let's get to work, shall we? We're going to need a new building. This building will be... Hmm. No, it's not going to be wah. Uh, what I would like to... I'm not sure how to tell compass directions. There may be something on the UI that I've i have missed here. But let's just assume for this time being that that is north. So that would be west. This would be... We're going to call this Eastbridge. I like having names for things. And the reason why I like having names for things so much is because then I can set up... If, if the... In my head, if there's a battle that takes place near the bridge, I need to have a, a suitably epic battle name. The Battle for Eastbridge. The Battle for Westgate. It, you need names for these things to work. That's the way it, it works in my head, anyway. Now, I would like this to... Well, let's go for a kind of a wooden bridge design, I think. Uh, yeah, let's go for a wooden bridge design. We'll go with... Um... If we aim for something a little bit more in the middle, so we've got Tobacco Brown, Punja, and Clinker. We'll go with go with the middle one. And let's set this bridge up somewhere around here. Now I'm not sure that we're gonna need it to be this wide, but we'll we'll see what we, we want. It's not gonna be that tall at all. I, I wouldn't want that, but we do want it to be uh, an odd number of tiles. I don't want it to be even, so let's make it nine instead. That'll give us plenty of room to play with designs on this bridge, and I'm quite uh, quite keen on that idea. Now that we've got an area for this, we're going to want a wall, but I, we're going to want a wall going through the water as well. I want to make this look reasonable, like it, it should be there. I'm thinking stone rather than clay for this one. Uh, now, this is going to require a fair bit of sun. Ooh, I'm not a big fan of the column color there, so let's uh, get rid of that. But I, I like the idea of the bridge being made of wood and stone, and it'll it'll be quite quite the uh, quite the building in the desert. Wood and stone are not nearly as uh, easy to come by as clay, you understand. And uh, so the column, let's go for something uh, trout. Let's go for <laughs> since it's in the water, that does actually make a surprising amount of sense. Now the reason why I'm drawing the bridge, the um, the walls in the water like this, is because we can then do some interesting things. I am a big fan, a very big fan, of using the hole tool to make interesting designs. For example, we can give the the bridge little uh, archways. Have we got enough to be able to? Oh, we have. That is wonderful. Three arches. Mm. That being said, that being said. Perhaps instead of that, let's go for a much larger arch and, and make it look a little bit more stout. 
Because those tiny spindly little arches there, they didn't really fill me with confidence that this uh, this bridge would be able to bear the load. Let's let's be honest with ourselves. Let's do something like that. There we go. And then the same over on this side. I hope you don't mind me keeping around for the design, but I, I figured with something like this, it's going to be a fairly swift little build. And uh, hopefully this may even uh, help by giving, uh, giving you some ideas for your own builds. Now, I'm going to want a wall coming out because this is going to introduce a bit of a uh, security risk for us. And to that end, I'm going to want to try and mitigate that where I can. Let's lower that wall down. And uh, on this side... Oh, bloody autosaves. Always scare me, you do. Uh, let's pull this down a little bit. So we've got a bit of a curve. A much wider curve. And there is a reason for that that I will go into uh, in a moment. It might not work. Uh, so we may may not go with the, the plan that I've got in my head. But I'm going to keep it, keep it to myself just for a moment. I know that's a little bit frustrating. But, uh, well, <laughs> I'm a bit of scallywag sometimes. Uh, as you should already know, given my... Uh, Penchant for for using uh, cliffhangers in my videos. Right, we want another stairs back over on this side. So let's pop you down. Right, uh, dab smack in. That is not the color that it was showing me. Please be the correct color. There we go. That's a bit better. Right, let's pull that up to the right side, and the same on this one, and then just pull that all the way down. There we go. Perfect. Right, we'll just finish off with the walls. Now, how many tiles have we put up? We've actually done quite a few, probably a little bit too many, honestly. But uh, we'll we'll see if I need to pull the the, the uh, wall back at all. Hopefully not. All right, let's uh, add in the holes over here. Uh, again, I find the hole tool fantastically useful for the, this sort of stuff. For, for creating a wall that has arches in it. Rather than building them with uh, the block tool because i find that the block tool does yeah, well, it's quite clunky to use in, in my opinion right now we are going to want a wall uh, sorry a floor of the same color and we'll allow it to be a little bit white uh further back so the steps are getting bigger as it approaches this large uh plane across the river there we go so that's, that's quite a wide bridge i know but this is going to give us an option to to build all sorts of uh, structures on the outside now one of those structures that i would like to do and i want to add a little bit of depth one of the things i was a little bit sad about on this build is that it ultimately was quite blocky it's quite a square build but you can do so much more than that so if we go back to walls and uh, use the same colors again and uh, just build this wall out here uh, once more then what we can do is once that's in place let's pull this down so I can make sure I've got the right design there we are and then start again making the holes but this time we will see that uh, because of the way that I'm building this little area and we'll bring that up and we can just tuck away these little sections on the side and we create the the illusion of depth while well, it's not strictly illusion uh, but there we are. It looks like this is now running and underground. It gives a, a little bit more more character to the build, in my opinion. It's a very, very simple thing to add. And yet it has a very, very big effect on the, the outcome of the build. Again, it, it, it's, uh, you know, different strokes for different folks. I'm sure some people will look at this and think, well, actually, that's just made it look, look ugly. But for me, I like having different shapes. I don't like it all being being solid planes. And also, this makes the columns look a lot more chunky and uh, actually able to support a building of this size and no doubt weight. There we go. We can do similar things uh, along the outsides here. We could have uh, little finer details, perhaps. Uh, now, we could even uh, paint these if we particularly wanted with different, different colored bricks. But uh, I'm... No, I don't think we want to do that. I don't think we want to do that. But there is room for, for certain uh, standards. We could even have flags on, on these tiles, for example, uh, and lamps moving up uh, along here. Uh, for the wood itself, I think we want um, something a little bit different. We want some sort of design there, realistically. Now, that's why I chose a color that was in the middle, because we can have a highlight and we can have a shadow. Uh, let's go for a simple highlight. Uh, it doesn't need to be a complicated pattern, this. Um, that was a mistake, but let's uh, see how it works out. Let's uh, build this out and then just have a couple 
a spot there and there just to make this look a little bit more like uh, some some pride was taken in the work it isn't just a bridge to 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 the people of avakin this this is their bridge and they care about what people think when when they cross this bridge they they want everything that they build to to show the the uh, craftsmanship that that uh, that the skanda trading company has come to understand uh, that uh, the, the people of avakin pride themselves on um could we i'm not sure if we've got enough colors here to really make any kind of uh, like not work pattern or anything like that so we'll probably avoid that for now but uh, that is definitely something else that we'd be able to do we can use a little bit of shading then we could give it uh, a, a, a kind of um, like embossed effect if we use the highlights and the shadows but i think rather than that because it, we don't have a lot of room to do that here we'll just do something along those lines it's, it's it's quite it's quite subtle i think but uh, that that in and of itself is uh is not a problem we'll have a little bit of a highlight just down here on the steps as well uh just on on that step there and it just gives a little bit of extra ca character to the build i think there we go i actually think that bridge is quite lovely now i'm not going to add decorations to the bridge itself as that would uh, i i think we can add those later but i will add a little bit of a road down here perhaps i could add that later now the reason why i've left this there the uh the the the, the wall coming forward a little bit is because i would like to make this um somewhat protected now we could if we want add in now is this wide enough uh no it's just a little bit too wide but we could have something like this we could have a gate set into this wall like so and uh, very similarly we could then have these built out on either side and i like that but maybe given that this is a stone bridge we could in fact use something a little bit more sturdy perhaps uh, we would go for stone over here and it would kind of set itself out from the rest of it but i'm not entirely sold on that i do quite like the the uh, clay gate design that we've got here now, if I place that down, it would necessitate that I've got any kind of uh, pathway already drawn in, I believe, because I don't think we'd be able to take it back uh, once that's done. So we're going to have to decide on what kind of flooring we're going to use. Fairly certain that floor there was this style. But I don't think that's what we're going to be using for our road flooring. And this is ultimately a road here. So let's just bring this out. As far as we're going to have the actual design itself because this will be part of the bridge from this point on I, I quite like this one although it's going to require that we get a fair chunk of stone to be able to make those roads um, across the rest of our our settlement I think that actually works out quite well so if we do that we can then go ahead and place down our gates and uh, likewise um Actually, I think we'll just have this there and there, and then a solid wall in the side there. And the gate isn't going to do much in the way of protecting us here. I, I understand that, but it'll do a tiny, tiny bit. It'll, it'll, it'll give uh, our citizens perhaps a moment's head start on any enemies that are chasing them. And I think, uh, I think that's all we can really, really be expected to offer. There we go. So this will give us... A nice little uh, gated bridge again it is going to make it easy for enemies to get across but for those that don't perhaps damage um, things like gates and doors it will effectively be a wall so it won't reduce the security of our our little village at all to the things out here i don't believe that for example the cactuslings and the like can smash gates i could be wrong on that but i think this is going to be a lovely little thing to build it's going to require seven stone six logs and then a couple of extra bits of stone for all of the uh, cobblestone fence posts and the like. So there we go. Eastbridge has been designed and hopefully will be uh, begun shortly. There we go. Uh, for that, we're going to need some extra stone though. So let's go ahead. And the last thing I'm going to do in, in this episode, we're not going to wait for Eastbridge to be constructed in this episode. Uh, that will be for the next episode. But I will set up this whole uh, area there to be um, dug down of stone just so that uh, we've got some building materials and probably the same 
over here as well. We are going to have to get into the uh, the mountain. Probably in the next episode, we're going to actually start a, a mine of some shape. But that should be all we need for now. I really do hope you've enjoyed this episode. Do let me know what you think about our design for Eastbridge in the comments down below. And I will see you in the next. But until then, and as always, do take care, everyone. <laughs>